Hey guys, it's Kim. So last night I actually put up a video that I took down this morning and it was this absurdly long video, like 25 minutes, outlining all of the different tools that I use in my spiritual path. Um, and it's, I spent like an hour trying to make it and it just kept being so long. So I put it up anyway, but when I woke up this morning, I just, I didn't want to keep it up because I just thought it was too long. And even with the length it was, I felt like I was rushing and it just, wasn't what I wanted to put out there. So I took it down and I'm going to redo the video, but I'm going to do it in parts. So this video is going to be one part of that larger video that's gone now. And it's kind of a an outline of the ritual and altar tools that I use. Some of these I use every day and some of them I use only for big rituals, but it's a smaller subset of that massive group that I tried to do in one video. So I hope you enjoy. I guys, I just wanted to uh, show you guys the things that I use and that mean a lot to me because I like watching other videos of people do that. So I thought it might be interesting. Okay, so let's see here. What will I start with? I guess I'll start with this is my pentacle pentagram little piece that sits right in the middle of my altar and I'll charge things over it. Um, I just, it's a really nice, I think it's really beautiful. It's, I spent like $6 on it and it's so shiny and nice and I just, I love it. And it just, yeah, I think it's a really great representation of, you know, earth, wind, water, fire, spirit, um, which is what the pentacle represents. And I really like it. So it, it's more of a, um, it, it's more of a ceremonial kind of um, aesthetic piece more than anything, but I really like it. And it's the centerpiece of my altar. So I really like that. This I love. This is a beautiful seashell that was actually given to me by a little girl that I babysit. And I love working with children. It's one of the absolute greatest joys and higher purpose in my life. Um, and she went on vacation to a beach and brought me this gorgeous shell back. So it has a few meanings why I love it so much. And one of which was that it was given to me by such a little innocent source and with so much love and positive energy. But also it's, I think it's gorgeous. It's huge. And what I use it for, it will go on my altar to represent water by itself. Or if I'm doing something in which I'm using ritual water, blessed water, then I will hold it in here because it actually it lays kind of like this. And it, it just stays like that. And it's got a big enough concave area that I can put water in it. And it's awesome. I love it. And I just, I think it's so pretty. And it's just a nice little piece of nature on my altar. This is my tiny offering bowl. Um, like I said in one of my first videos, I am a college student. So I have pretty much no money. <laughs> so when I go shopping for things, I have a very limited budget. And I went to a shop to try and find an offering bowl. And I found this little guy. And I love it. It's this little handcrafted piece. And it's so pretty. And I really like all these things. And I think, you know, it's all about the quality, not the quantity. And as long as it's got the intention that I want behind it, I think, you know, the amount that I'm offering up isn't as important as what it is that I'm doing. So this little guy serves me for that purpose. At one point, I would like to have a bigger one, certainly, but this has worked really well for the few years that I've had it. And I just, I think it's so cute. So even if I do get a bigger one, I'll, I'll still use that for other things. These two I just got last month um, as a birthday present for my boyfriend. So these are these little handmade clay goddess and god statues. And I think they're so cute and I love them. And they're just really great representations of that middle layer of my pyramid, like the all god energy and all goddess energy. Um, and I found these on an Etsy shop and put them on my birthday on my birthday list, excuse me. And I'm gonna link that Etsy shop down below so that you guys can find it if you like it. She will make them in any color and it was just, this awesome woman who was just really, really nice to speak to about these. And I just really, really like them. So um, I would love to have bigger statues of the specific deities that I work with. But like I already said, my budget is very small. And the kind of statues that I look at are well out of my budget. So it's something that I certainly would love to get at another time. But right now these little guys i'll show them again really serve my purpose as well of just being nice representations of that energy and it's just really nice and i love that it's i love that it's handmade and um the woman was really friendly about it so i like that a lot 
Um, what next? Okay. So this is one of my Pride and Joy pieces, and I love it. I actually don't use it very often, though. So this is my Athame. And you can see it is gorgeous. And I'll get into it a little bit, but I want to show it first. So it's in this leather sheath. Let me pull it out. So nice. I love it. I love looking at it. Um, so it's a handmade blade, handmade Damascus steel blade, camel bone handle. Gorgeous. I absolutely love it. And I am actually a knife collector, and I have been collecting knives for a very long time, and it's a huge passion of mine. So this actually serves dual purpose as being my athame and also being like the centerpiece of my collection because it is fantastic. It was a Christmas present also for my boyfriend. Um, and the reason that I don't use it very much is that I have another piece that I prefer to use to direct energy because I think this has a very specific energy about it. It's a little bit harsher. Um, I'll use it for a lot of me banishing type work. Um, very specific things um and the piece that i'm going to show you next has a is a lot of a broader spectrum for me um so he this guy doesn't actually sit on my altar he sits with the rest of my knife collection because i have them very carefully displayed um because i like to look at him in that sense but i do use him in my ritual work when i feel called to use anathema but let me get this button done okay um what i use more often than that is this guy. This is my favorite piece in my collection. This is my wand. And the reason it's my favorite piece, even though it is so simple, is because I made it. It is the only thing in my collection that I made. And I am not very physically artistic, like physically making things, that like crafting. So I love the fact that I made this. Um, I think it was two years ago. Um, like I said, I grew up in the Northeast in the mountains. Like, it was a big town, but plopped right in the center of the mountains. So, you know, I had my house and my backyard, and then miles and miles and miles of protected forest and wooded area. And it was gorgeous, and I loved it. And it's, it's like, it, it's a very, very spiritual place for me. And the next time that I go home, I will do a video out there so you guys can kind of see what it's like. It's, it's so beautiful. But when I wanted to find a wand, I went out with my boyfriend and we found this tree and I saw this branch and it was covered in bark and stuff at the time. It wasn't a birch tree, so it doesn't, it didn't look like this. And I asked the tree if I could take it. I made a little offering and I felt that I could. So I cut it off. I um, whittled it myself. I sealed it with Mod Podge, which I'm not actually sure if you're supposed to use it on wood. I didn't, I, I don't really know a lot about it. But it has worked really well for my purposes, at least. This stick has not gotten brittle or dry or anything. It's exactly like it was when I first carved it. And then for this handle, I had this wire in my garage, and I just felt really called to use it. And I know that some people don't like having non-natural elements in their pieces, and I, under I understand the sentiment behind that. But I really liked having the metal because metal is a conductor. It conducts electricity and energy and it just, I don't know, it made me feel like it was emphasizing the energy I was sending out. And like I said, I'm not very crafty, so I don't have any cool designs in it or anything like that. But it's a piece of home and I made it and so it's really special to me. And I use it all the time. Anytime I'm, I'm directing energy and like I said, I'm an energy and, and spirit worker, so I do that very frequently. Um, I use my hands and I use my wand and it has so many wonderful purposes for me and I love it. Um, what do I want to show next? Okay, this is my ritual incense burner. I have a daily one that I use like six times a day because I love incense. So, but this one only comes out in really formal ceremonies and rituals. So like Esbets, Sabbaths, big to-dos, that kind of thing. He's my formal one. And I just think he's really cute. It reminds me of like Greek pottery, which is really cool. And he's got this part that comes off. And so I'll put sea salt in here, sometimes kosher salt, but I like sea salt better. And I have special incense that I only use for this guy. Um, it's a little more expensive than the one that I use day to day. And it um, it's like some of my favorite smells. So he, this guy is my special one. And I really like him. I think he's really nice. And this is my day-to-day -day one. So I'm sure most of you have seen something like this because they are sold in shops 
all over things exactly like this like they have stars going down it they are you know pretty identical I actually just got this a couple months ago because I wanted a more day-to-day -day use one and I got it for like three dollars it was really awesome but the reason that I love it so much and that I wound up getting this one is because it has this little elephant on the bottom and elephants are one of my spirit animals and animals that I work with their energy a lot which brings me to this guy so this is my little elephant statue. I get so happy just looking at him. Um, and he's fantastic. I love him. He doesn't have a name um, because I just haven't felt called to name him. But he represents this really positive, beautiful energy that I sense from elephants and in my interactions with using an elephant as my spirit animal, which has always been extremely positive and really beneficial for me. So he sits on my altar as a representation of that. And his top his trunk goes up which is good luck you're supposed to rub it so i like to rub his little trunk for good luck and he's got a little elephant smile i think he's so cute as soon as i saw him i was like oh i have to have it i have a lot of different elephant things so here's this guy he's so cute what else okay it looks like i have just the one more thing sweet okay this is my tibetan singing bowl and i love this. I just got it a month ago as a birthday present from my parents. Um, and bells and ringing sounds are very important to me in my practice because I use them to bring in the spirits and guides, you know, gods, goddesses, energies that I want to use in my practice and whatever I'm doing. So whether I'm just doing a small devotional prayer or a big ceremony, I started out with bells or ringing sounds. Um, and so I had this little bell that I was using up until about a month ago, and I really didn't like it because it, it the sound was too harsh for me. So I looked up all these things and I got this Tibetan singing bowl, I put it on my birthday list. And I tried to do this earlier in a video and the sound, it just, it didn't do it justice. So I don't even wanna try because I don't, I don't know. I just, I felt like it was almost disrespectful because it really, really didn't, go through because I'm just using my computer to film this and it, it really didn't go through so I'm going to use a better recording device and then I'm gonna um, put it in as like maybe background music or something but it is it's just this multi-tonal amazing ringing sound it like it just it makes my third eye and crown chakras just spin and vibrate so amazingly and I love it and as soon as I do it I just feel like so centered and I'm in the sacred space and I can feel all of the positive energies that I'm trying to call in come to me and my guides and guardians and it's just fantastic. So I love that and it's just, it's really special to me. So that is all I want to show you guys today. Um, the other parts are going to be coming up sometime soon. One of them is going to be my divination tools and the reason that I wanted to do that separately this time around was because... I am an energy and spirit worker and through that I do a lot of work with divination tools. So I have a lot of different things that I like to use and I have a lot to say about them because um, I'm a bit of a talker if you can't tell. So I thought that that should be its own video and in the now deleted video I brought out my book of shadows. Um, but I barely talked about it because I want it to be its own video so I am going to do that too. I'm going to kind of talk about my process with working with it, show you guys a little bit of what's inside and talk about, you know, how I go about, you know, my, my experiences working with my Book of Shadows. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little peek into what everything looks like. I'll put up a picture soon of my altar set up in its day-to-day -day form. Um, so yeah, I hope everybody's having an excellent day. Thank you again to everyone who's been watching so far and subscribing. This has been such a joyful experience already, and I just love spending this time talking to you guys. So again, questions, comments, disagreements, anything you want, please go ahead, comment. I'd love to hear it all, and I hope everybody is having an absolutely amazing day. Blessed be. Namaste.